Just a quick note before I get started. We have a church survey going around, and I would like to invite uh, everyone to take a moment and fill one out uh, before you leave tonight. Um, we are encouraging these surveys because we want to know where we are. You know, with a church plant, there are a lot of details to consider, and so we want to know where we are as far as what you're seeing as compared to what we you know, believe we're putting out. So we're asking for your honest feedback on um, what you've experienced with us. And also, I want to emphasize these are anonymous. And so, you know, you feel free to give your honest opinion. Um, but we know that we all are here. And what does the Bible say? It says, speak the truth in love. Amen. So we can we can speak the truth with one another. So um, if you haven't received a survey, can you just raise your hand or if you need one? Okay. Thank you very much. And so uh, maybe we could take some time after service and have those turned back in. But I have the uh, distinct honor of being your speaker tonight. I'm Ronnie Smith. I'm uh, the wife of Pastor Julius. And it's always an honor to be here, uh, to be able to share with you what us say the Lord. Uh, so first, let's begin by opening our Bibles to Luke 1 and 26. Okay. And how's the sound? Does it sound good? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Say amen if you have it. That's Luke chapter 1. Starting at verse 26. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. So Luke chapter 1 beginning at verse 26 reads, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man who was named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored in the Lord, and the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying, and cast her mind in what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing as I know not a man? And the angel answered, and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Amen. And bless the reading of the word. So, you know, um, we, we are all familiar with this story, you know, as Christians. We know this is the account of the how Jesus came to be, the miracle that was his birth, right? Because he was born of a virgin. But, you know, a question comes to mind when I read this passage. Uh, because we, we know in natural terms, when a child is born, or rather when a child is conceived, there's an egg and a sperm, right? We're all familiar with how this works. There's an egg and a sperm. 
and these are the natural elements that come together to conceive a child. Jesus, we know, is fully God, and he's fully man. That means as much as he is deity, it's 100%, he's 100% human. Mm -hmm. So in order for him to be born, I have to ask the question, we know Mary brought the egg. Who brought the sperm? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -oh. Who brought the sperm? Mm -hmm. these, are the, these are the elements required, right? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so we, we know that there was no physical sperm involved because that requires another human being, another man. That would have been Joseph's seed had it been a natural egg and a natural sperm. We know this was a miracle. This is why it's a miracle, because it happened without there actually being a physical male specimen to create this baby, if I can get scientific a little bit. So the title of this message is The Seed of Faith. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, the seed of faith. So here we have this young woman, and she's visited by an angel. You know, one thing I thought is interesting about the Old Testament, whenever an angel visits, they have to say, don't be afraid. Because can you imagine, you're just kind of washing the dishes or something, <laughs> and all of a sudden this angelic being just arrives and comes to converse with you <laughs> on behalf of God. And they often say, don't be afraid. You know, she said, so to what, to, for what do I have this visit? You know, what, what kind of salutation should this be? <laughs> so the angel says, fear not. <clears throat> you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in the womb and bring forth a child. Now here's the thing. I think what she said next was what any of us would say. How can this be what I've known no man? Because we all know how this works, how a child comes into being. She knew no man. And so, you know, at verse 35, the angel answered and said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also, that holy thing which shall be born in thee shall be called the Son of God. So what he does is he gives her more clarity on what God's will is. Mm -hmm. This angel comes, he's an ambassador for God. And this is God's will for her, and he's explaining it. And here's the thing, a little side note. It's okay to ask for clarity. When God mm -hmm. speaks a word into your life, you know, some of us, we just want to run with it. Yeah. I think the Lord said I need to go to Zimbabwe, uh, and so I've, got, I've already quit my job, and I've packed my bags, and I've got a ticket. No, okay, there may be more detail to it. It's okay to inquire mm -hmm. of the Lord. Verse 37, he, I love this. He says, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Mm -hmm. Even a woman who's never known a man can bring forth a child. And so... What is Mary's response? Now that she's heard a little more detail about how this is supposed to work, hmm. she says, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be unto me according to thy word. Mm -hmm. It is very important, her response in that moment. She didn't doubt. I don't believe her questions were doubt to say how could this be. Hmm. She wanted more clarity. So her response was saying, all right, you've already told me nothing is impossible with God. This is what he wants from me. So let it be done according to your word. I believe we all need to have that kind of attitude. When we hear the word of God, when it's spoken to us, how we respond is so important. So he said, you shall live and not die. Say, be it unto me. You said, I am the head and not the tail. Hmm. Be it unto me. You said, I am more than a conqueror. Be it unto me. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. Be it unto me. Uh -huh. You said, I'm blessed in coming in. I'm blessed going out. Yeah. Be it unto me. You said, you shall supply all my needs yeah. according to your riches and glory. Our response ought to be, be it mm -hmm. unto me according to thy word. Yes. That is a positive response. <laughs> and in that response, you have now taken that seed mm -hmm. that was the word of God spoken to you, and you've decided to plant it. You didn't abort the seed. What if Mary had said, you know what, mm -hmm. I, I, gotta, I kinda got a thing going on. Um, the next nine months might be a little tough for me. <laughs> so I don't know if I can do that. She would have aborted that word. She would have aborted that seed. Uh. 
But no, she said, be it unto me. Mm -hmm. She said yes, and she cooperated with the will of God. And so it was. So could it be that when Mary spoke those words, she was coming into agreement with the will of God, an act of agreement created a seed of faith, and that's what conceived a miracle in her. Mm -hmm. They didn't need the natural sperm. The word of God became the seed. So for you, could it be that when you hear the word of God spoken right to your situation in the moment where you needed to hear it, mm. it has the ability to produce faith in your life or it can abort your miracle? Mm. Okay, we don't get Baptist. Tell your neighbor, don't abort your miracle. Don't abort your miracle. <laughs> come on, come on. All right. Point number one. So point number one here. Faith requires a response. Mm. Mary brought the natural. God brought the supernatural. Mm. Mary brought the raw materials. God brought the masterpiece. Mm. No, 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 hold on. I'm getting ahead of my... Mary brought the blank canvas, and God created the masterpiece. Mm. Mary brought the raw materials. God built a house. Mm. Mary brought her yes, and God went to work. Come on. And that is what he will do in your life. Every time. Take the word, say, yes, mm -hmm. I will. Yes, and he will go to work. Our problem is we want to give God our yes, but then we want to kind of stand over his shoulder and we want to say, okay, well, so how's it ha what's going to happen with that? Um, how can I get involved? No, but, you know, we can't supervise the project and peek in on the progress. No, we can't forget. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. So let him work. Let him work. Paul says it like this in James 2.18, faith without works is dead. Amen. A man may say, you have faith and I have works. Show me that faith without thy works and I'll show you my faith by my works. Uh -huh. In other words, when you truly believe something, you act on it. Your response to the word of God will reflect if you truly believe it or not. That's right. So, you know, when I was growing up, um, there was always the family members who were superstitious. And it's funny because you can't really walk two steps without offending one of their superstitions. <laughs> uh -huh. So, you know, there, there was there was all these rules, right? Walking down the street, don't split the pole. They might know why you don't split the pole because you might be separated from that person. Yeah. <laughs> don't sweep my feet. Oh my god. Because then I will ne I'll never get swept off my feet. Oh my god. <laughs> a little salt over the shoulder for good luck, you know. Mm -hmm. Or don't put a black hat on the bed, that means Anything. death, that means death. Don't ever put your purse on the floor, oh, God, that means you'll never have any money. Uh -huh. You know, and so we live by these, well, some live by these superstitions. As a kid, I'm scratching my head, that make that silly. <laughs> but you know, really what we're doing when we act upon superstitions is we hope they're not true. We do it or we avoid doing that action because we hope it's not true. But if we act upon the word of God, what it is is we hope it is true. We ought to act the same way, that positive response to the word of God. I'm not going to be afraid because my God says, fear not, yeah. I am with you. I'm not going to sit up at Hallelujah. night worrying because my help comes from the Lord, yeah. who is my refuge and, and strength. strength. Amen. I'm not going to call on Jack Daniels. I can call on well, the Lord, and he will answer me, and he will deliver that's me. That's right. That is the positive response. So here we go. Uh, let's let's move on to another titan of faith. My, my, my. Genesis 15, starting at verse 1. Genesis 15, verse 1, we're talking about Abraham. You know, Abraham is considered the father of our faith. That's right. Mm -hmm. Say amen when you got it. Say amen when you got it. Amen. All right. This thing is very sensitive. Forgive me. Okay, so uh, starting at verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. I, I, I can shout right there, mm -hmm. honestly. <laughs> uh, 
a shield and thy exceeding great reward. great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. Can I pause right there? Once again, God says something profound, and he speaks it into your life. Abram had a question. Mm -hmm. How could this be? Mm -hmm. Right? It's okay to ask and inquire for more detail. Mm -hmm. That's not an act of disbelief. That's right. But if anything, you do believe it. You just want to know, how do I participate? So he asked a question. And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought forth abroad and said, Look now toward the heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Amen. And he believed in the Lord and it counted to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. Amen. So there, there's so much there. You know, he asked for more detail. How can this be? And what did the Lord say? He gave him a visual. Can you count the stars? And, and if you've ever been out on a clear night, the stars, it's impossible to count all the stars. And he's saying that's how prolific your seed will be in the earth. And I love that. You know, God is faithful to give us more detail as we acquire with him. I want to encourage you to just spend time in his presence and listen because he wants to give you that, that detail you're looking for. But the, the thing is, he says, and Abram believed the Lord and it counted to him for righteousness. righteousness. Once again, your response matters. Because Abram believed God, God blessed Abraham. Abram, at this point, he's not Abraham yet. But get that. Because Abram believed God, God blessed Abram. He believed God, God blessed Abram. This is the grace of God at work. Can you see it? This is God's grace. And we can get so complicated in our understanding and sometimes in our communication of grace. But grace is God giving you the blessing without you first having to offer a sacrifice for it. Because Jesus was that sacrifice. If we bring this into the new covenant understanding, Jesus made the sacrifice and opened the door for us to receive what we did not earn. That's grace. Because Abram believed, God blessed. Why do we make it so complicated? If you believe, God blesses. Abram believed and God redeemed him. Amen. So this moment is the evidence also, too. I love that it is evidence of God's grace, even in the old covenant. Even under an old covenant, God still was extending grace to people. And, and a key that I'm not going to get into because that's not this message, but where there is no law, there is no trespass. Mm -hmm. That's deep, y'all. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, let's talk about it. Where there is no law, there is no trespass. So right. with Abram... Simply believing was enough and the grace was available because there had not been a law yet that said, you know, the, the, the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. When the law was given, sin revived and I died. That's what Paul says, right? Mm -hmm. For us, we're no longer under the law. Those who have received Jesus as Lord and Savior have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness mm -hmm. into the kingdom of his, of his marvelous son. And it's, yeah. We are now in a new covenant, and we're in a new kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's a kingdom of grace, mm -hmm. where we receive by faith. Mm -hmm. And that is really the essence of what I'm telling you tonight, is that we don't have to come to God with, with all of our works. You know, he was saying faith without works is dead. It's our works in response to faith, not our works to try to, to, to create faith. Mm -hmm. Not our works to try to create uh, uh, peace with God. We have peace with God. Amen. Where there is no trespass. Where there, is, there is no law. Thank you. That was just a little added tidbit. So, point number two. 
faith is enough. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna we're gonna go in a little more detail there. Romans 10, 8 through 10 says, The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So this is the journey we've all been on. Those who are born again, a word was spoken. We responded. And our faith was enough to move us once again from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, into God's kingdom. We're no longer destined for hell, but now we have righteousness and true holiness in him. So that word was spoken. We responded positively. And that was enough for salvation. A word was spoken and you believed. By grace, God spoke and you were saved. So is he saying that if you confess with your mouth, start going to Bible study faithfully, make sure that you tithe on the gross and not the net, or is it the uh, other way around? Tithe on the gross. Is he saying if you shall confess with that mouth and make sure that you go to the altar and confess all your sins, if you confess with your mouth and then make sure that you get your water baptism and you come to every discipleship class and make sure that you take off all those requirements, What's he saying? No, he's not saying that. He's saying confess with your mouth and believe it, but believe it in your heart, first of all. That's the qualifications for salvation. All the other things come as a response to God. That's right. Not to repay him. Amen. Mm -hmm. We keep trying to add to our salvation. We keep trying to make it more complicated than it really is. Faith is a powerful thing. And it's such a good God. He is such a good God that it's his grace that makes it available simply by faith. Mm. How how blessed are we that if in your heart you know God has done something for you, he's, he's given himself for you. And in your heart, you want a relationship with him. The confession comes as a result of that. And you are transformed in that instant. So let's move on to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 3, and I'll read this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report, and through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now I read that whole thing. You know, we kind of stop and shout at that first verse. But in the third verse, I think it's interesting how it says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. You go to Hebrews chapter 1, it says, Everything is held together by the power of his word or the word of his power. God's words have created everything and brought everything into being. I got news for you. There's no Big Bang. Hmm. It all came from a word spoken Hmm. by God, God himself. Mm -hmm. Just like he produced that seed in Mary by a word, so will he do in your life. So I want to continue in Hebrews 11 because it's so inspiring. You know, this is the faith chapter, right? Mm -hmm. The faith chapter. <clears throat> Let's go there. And I want you to really, you know, visualize what's being said. What's really being said here in these in these verses. And I may skip here and there, but now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, 
and by it being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death see and was not found because God had translated him. How many of you want to be translated? Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> For Because God had translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony, oh, he that he pleased God. But without faith, here it is, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. When we approach God, we already have to have a, an understanding that he is faithful to do what, we, we, what, we, what we're seeking. By his word, he will do it. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, the things not seen yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise and in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Mm. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, which was delivered of a child when she was past age, mm. because she judged him faithful who had promised. She judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Those all died in faith, not mm. having received the promises, Look at but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and had confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, and heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. And it goes on, it goes on. There's so many accounts of faith and what can happen and what God can do when we take our faith and match it with his word, his promise. I'm using that term synonymously. His word is his promise. His word is the seed and our positive response to it can transform our lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. So in closing, and I don't know how long I've been up here, but <laughs> how will you respond? See, now the charge is on you. How will you respond? When God speaks a word and creates a seed of faith, will you plant it hmm. or avoid it? When God speaks a word to you, whether in word or in action, your response matters. So I urge you to believe. Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper mm -hmm. in the thing whereunto I sent it. I sent it, that's right. I mean, you can take that to the bank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hebrews 1035, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great, great recompense of reward. Second Chronicles 16, 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless to him. Good, good scripture. By grace he provided it. By faith you receive it. Amen. That ought to be the mantra of our lives, you know, because we can fall so we can we can so easily fall into that works mentality again. Saying, I've got to do this for God for him to be pleased. And if I don't do this and he won't bless me, by faith you receive what he has provided by grace. Put your faith in him. Trust him. And he won't let you down. And I told you I was kind of in a Baptist mood. And yeah, as, um, yeah. the Lord was speaking to me here. Went to the conference. Um, <laughs> this song came to mind. It says, and if you know it, sing with me. We've come this 
Continue to reveal more and more of your love and your provision to us, God, for peace, for strength, for greater love, greater understanding, God, deeper relationship with you, deeper fellowship with you, God, and the ability to bless others. Hallelujah. By faith, God, we know that nothing is impossible with you. So uh, I pray blessing over each and every person here. I welcome many of you up to the front. If you feel like you you your faith has been wavering or, or if, if the Lord has been dealing with you about believing him for more, whatever it may be, we are here to pray for you and I welcome the ministers uh, to pray. But we thank you God and we, we bless you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.